Hi, did you know that there is an 18-acre theme park that is inspired by selected passages of the Bible? It is called Holy Land USA. It's in my hometown, Waterbury, Connecticut. Isn't that crazy? So it's basically run down. It is so creepy. Like I've been there a couple times. I walked around and there's just like a bunch of, consists of a chapel, stations of the cross, rec- replicas of, of anything that was involved in the Bible. And it was built in 1955, it opened. And yeah, it's just one of those places that, you know, it's very creepy. Called Holy Land USA. So when you go to my hometown in Waterbury, you're going to see a giant cross, a shit ton of shitty people. It's a shithole, but you're going to see that. It's run down. It's a good place to walk so you can see the city in the top, but it is abandoned and it is a theme park of the Bible. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So welcome to an episode of Nevermind a Broadcast and I am your host, Izzy Smut. This mother fucking week is the episode that I am so excited for you to listen to because I get to interview someone that I've looked up to, love their band, and I am fangirling the whole time. So I, I can't even. It's just one of those things where I was so happy and thankful that he spent the time to do this interview. Like, Al, mother fucking pissed. So he gave me an unreleased track from their up- upcoming album, The Piss Is Risen. And it features 19 songs, and it's the first thing they've recorded in 27 years. I mean, we had to wait 27 fucking years for a new album. I am so excited. The song that he gave me that I can put in this, in this show, which I'm super excited that he, he lent me this track, it's called Let It All Go. Holy shit. It was well worth the wait. It's one of those songs where I can picture the pit just fucking opening and everybody just dies in it because it's so good. It's just one of those things where we've waited for this for so long. And this is like huge, especially for the Connecticut punk scene because we needed this so bad because, it's, you know, like me and Al, we're from Waterbury. So I feel like we're both kindred spirits of the Brass City, even though it's filled with shit. You know, there's good things that came out of it. You know, whatever. So this is Let It All Go by The Pissed. That was Let It All Go by The Piss. And this next band is another band that Al's in. You know, since you just got your mind totally blown, I feel like I bring it back and make you dance. Because this band makes me want to dance. They're super talented. Like, the, it's so cool how they go from super heavy and ah, and then they, they do this song, this band, and you're like, holy shit, I, I just want to dance, but like, 
but be happy, you know, like that, that never happens, but it's so cool. They're super talented, such talented group of guys that are in the band. So this is the Deacons with the Innocents. This is on the corner selling dreams for a quarter. It's a dime for a dozen. Nickel for your thoughts, he's got an AC jacket. That was the Deacons with the Innocent and this last band. I am so excited. It is an unreleased track, 
by my one of my favorite con- you know bands from that I've seen many times and played with many times M13 yeah, so this song is called Ready Steady. It's an unreleased track. I was super, super stoked when he sent it to me because I was like, it's an unreleased track, and I listened to it, and it blew my shit everywhere. I don't even know. I, I was like, oh, my God. If I would have heard this song live, I don't even know if anybody would be alive to see the next day. It was so... I mean, I wasn't... I'm not trying to, to threaten anybody's life, but I would have just exploded everywhere and pieces of me would have been everywhere because it is so fucking good. It is amazing. Like, what? Why did you keep that song a secret? And I'm going to play this song for you. It's Ready Steady by M13. And then I'm going to play the interview with Al Pissed. Just so you know, it was an awesome interview. He's so cool. He's so awesome. Like, he's one of those guys that, that any he, you could talk to him for hours. I'm just, it, it's just awesome. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Because, like, a lot of people that have been in bigger bands have, like, that rock star attitude. Like, I'm too good to do anything. I'm too good to respond to messages. Too good, blah, blah, blah. You yeah, know, fuck those people. Al Piss is fucking cool as fuck. And he will always be cool in my book. So, this is M13 with Ready Steady. Brought out. My name's Al. People call me Al Pissed since the, that's kind of the, the band that I guess I'm best known for being in. I was and am the singer in the Pissed. I'm also in a band called the Deacons, and I play bass in that band. Um, that's the, that's the current the current bands I'm playing in right now. Awesome. And you have a lot going on, I mean, with the Pissed and releasing an album and all that stuff. So tell me about that. How that came together. You know, as some people know, you know, we we've been doing what we'd call reunion shows, I guess, because the band technically broke up in 1996. Uh, we all kind of went our separate ways and did, you know, some of us did bands together, but, you know, it wasn't until I believe it was 2001, I think, when the tune-in in New Haven was closing that we were asked to to get back together to play kind of a farewell to that club because uh, that was kind of one of one of the places that we played all the time. And you know, it was kind of a, a second home to us, um, a lot of people in the scene. Yeah, so since then, every few years, we get back together and do a handful of shows, and then we take a year or two off, and then we do a few more. And after a while, it sort of seemed like, why are we doing this? <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, are we just going to be a band that's just going to get back together and play? I mean, people people still come out. They still like, like our old stuff, but, you know, I was feeling like, and, and it, the guys in the band also were feeling like, you know, if we're going to keep doing this, let's let's actually be a band and start writing some new music. So that's how this whole thing came about. That makes me happy, and, and I'm excited <laughs> for it. So, like, so what, in regards to the lyrics for for the new album, what what direction did you go in? I will say that uh, there's it's not like a, a 
a concept album or anything, but I mean, there's definitely some themes that that we touch on a lot in it, and that's uh, most of it is having to do with kind of the corporatization of the government and America, and you know how money runs everything, and you know it's it's always been like that, but it seems like lately it's it's way more blatant. You know, there's just few you know the the big corporations swallow up everybody else and they're kind of running the show at this point and and they're pulling all the strings and congress and the white house and everything else so we touch on those themes a lot other, other things the the things we don't get as involved in that we used to was like we, we used to write a lot of songs about like the punk scene and and things like that that uh, which is still important to us, but I think we've probably said just about everything we've needed to say, you know, on those types of subjects. Those albums that you guys created before, I mean, and it's still, I mean, important, and it, and I know that this album is going to be important. So, do you know when? Uh, do you have an, a date of when it's going to come out? I think we haven't we haven't actually released it because released the date because we don't know when we're going to have the records in our hand yet. Um, we're still waiting to get our test presses to, you know, to okay that and and um, and have that come out. And I, I do need to say too that, um, yeah, it, it is going to be a full length album that we're putting out. There's, let's see, I think there's like five record labels involved at this point, you know, including Vault from from Philly, Havoc Records, Profane Existence is involved, Dismantled. So yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of people pitching in on this uh, for distribution and to and to get it out, but. I think uh, it's looking like we're going to at least release it digitally on our on Bandcamp. Um, we're going to shoot for Halloween for that. Nice. Keep your eyes open <laughs> for that. We should be making an announcement pretty soon. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, do you guys have any uh, any tours that you're going to plan or, or anything? I know you guys are doing a show soon, so just tell me what you know shows that you guys, you guys got planned or planning. Yep. Um, so the beginning of next year, um, I think we're looking at you know maybe starting in February. Uh, just because of everybody's schedules and everything, is when we could actually start doing a little bit of traveling. I mean, we're not going to do a full-out tour, but we're going to try to, you know, fly out to the West Coast for maybe a long weekend, you know, play all the places in the Northeast that, you know, we, we want to play, like, you know, New York, Connecticut, Boston, Philly, you know, Baltimore, Baltimore, D.C. area. I don't know, maybe we'll get down south too, down down towards Atlanta or something at some point. We'd really like to get down there because it's been – a long time. You could always jump in with us. Yeah, <laughs> not far away. <laughs> no, that, that's that's awesome. I can't I can't wait to see all the dates. Out of all the bands that you've been in, I know you've been in the past and uh, and and a bunch of other bands. Um, has mm -hmm. there been a, a band that you were like, damn, like that band made a huge impact too? Besides the past, then you're like that you would think about maybe trying to try to go about it again or just making an out another album. I think. I mean, certainly, you know, I think the Pist had the widest reach. You know, I think it was just the time that we were around and, you know, we were out touring all the time and, and playing shows constantly and putting out records constantly. So I think that that band out of Alton certainly has gotten gotten out there more than anybody else. But I don't know. I think at least locally, M13 has probably had a pretty big impact, too, uh, around at least the Connecticut scene. We, you know, we always love to play in Connecticut, even though most of the band was from Brooklyn and, you know, we, we always had a blast and, you know, I mean, I know you, you and I have played plenty of shows together um, with M13 and, uh, but I, I, that's, that's certainly not going to happen again. We kind of did our one farewell show whenever that was, can't yeah, remember when it was, a, a year I ago, a year and a half or something. <laughs> It must have been tough too, because like with all the COVID and all that stuff, and it, you know, made things. Because I know you guys had to reschedule, because you guys had a piss show right before the world went to crap, and then you yep. know, having to do everything again afterwards. So that's gotta, you know, then you have to be like, oh shit, now I got to get back going into the band mode. So get everybody ready yep. to go. <laughs> yeah, that it was like, you know, there was there was not many venues still still actually functioning at that point. So you know, when, when we, we finally just, you know, when it got, everything got kind of postponed indefinitely, we weren't really in a hurry to try to rebook everything. Cause I know that there's a lot of bands out there that are actual like bands that are relying on playing to make a living. So, you know, wanted to kind of leave spots open for them for a while before we actually, you know, started booking again, but, but yeah, we were able to, um, to book a few of the shows that got canceled at the beginning. Cause I mean, literally, I think it was, uh, what was it, March 
14th, I think, was the show uh, in, in New Haven of 2020. Yeah. And it was like COVID pretty much like really hit the day before, like two days before. And it was a really tough decision at the time because nobody knew what the hell was going on. You know, it's a really tough decision to cancel that show because, you know, everybody, we had already done all the rehearsals and, you know, people were traveling to come to it and, you know, but it certainly was the right move, I think. Oh, absolutely. So I remember um, when, you know, when that was going on and I was looking forward to the show, but then I, I understand too. I was like, damn, well, can't really have people dropping, you know, getting sick around that, you know, having endangered everybody. So yeah, I just remember that time too. I was like, damn, that, that would have been a great show. But now that it's happening, now that, you know, you guys are, you just did the album, are you guys doing another mm-hmm. album or are you just going to keep that the one and then see about it later? <laughs> I will say that, um, I mean, we wrote 21 new songs. Um, we recorded 22 songs in the studio. Oh my God. Bill can write music. I mean, he could write five songs a day if, if we asked him to. I'm not going to ask him to because I cannot write five songs. I can't write the lyrics to five songs in a day. I could, maybe five months. I really, it takes me a long time to write to write lyrics just because I, I sweat over every syllable. So, but we're ready. I mean, you know, let's we're going to get this record out first and then talk about you know, maybe not another album, but who knows? I mean, if if the inspiration's there and we have the ideas, eh, why not? You know, recording is a lot easier and cheaper than it used to be <laughs> years ago. You know, to get like a, a decent quality recording, it's definitely uh, way more feasible than it used to be to do a whole album. It's like with the what, the Deacons too, are you guys still you guys are recording another album or or doing all this stuff as well? So on October fifteenth at the showcase at Sherman Theater in Stroudsburg, PA. Uh, the Deacons and the Pist are playing with uh, Disposable and Doc Rotten. And uh, thanks to Pretty Vacant for putting that on. It's awesome. We're psyched to be playing. We're kind of gearing up for that show right now. And after that, the Deacons are going to be pretty much just working on tightening up our new songs that we've already written and maybe working on writing a couple more. So looking at the winter uh, kind of hibernating and working on writing new stuff and working on practicing. So that's awesome, especially when you're trying, especially in the winter time too. So it makes things tough when you know when you live up here and then you have to <laughs> in the snows and you're like, damn it. <laughs> the problem nowadays is with these bands is that you know the pest is you know me. I live on the Connecticut Massachusetts line. You know our guitarist Bill, he lives in uh, Philly. Um, our bass player Aaron and drummer Brian, they live in Baltimore. So getting together to rehearse is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, and the Deacons is even worse because we've got uh, people in, in actually in Stroudsburg, PA, in Philly. You got me, a couple guys around Waterbury, Connecticut, and um, our drummer is in Staten Island. God. That's, that's <laughs> tough, too. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, I, I don't even, like, there's there's bands, there's people in bands that can't even make it work, and they live five minutes, uh, you know, <laughs> five minutes away from each other. You guys live all over, and you guys can make it well, work. So no excuses to those people. <laughs> right. You know, this is, it's it all chalks up to the fact that we've been, these are the people that we play well together, we get along together, more, most importantly, like, you know, we all have the same kind of, I don't know attitude and vision about playing music you know there's nobody i've been in bands with younger people before that you know i didn't have a lot in common with and it ended up blowing up in my face and not not being you know good in the long run um or just you know other people who just didn't have the same type type of mindset but you know everybody that i've been involved with in bands has you know i've been involved with since i mean i've been playing with rich from you know with the singer and the deacons and I'm 13. I've been playing with him since, you know, the first time we got together and made made music or noise or whatever was like 1984 in his garage. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean that it's kind of cool that you you find people with similar because you kind of have to have similar mindset with other people because it's hard if you have the one person that in the band that or just even one person that just doesn't vibe with the rest of the band or just doesn't have that mindset then it really does it, you know make the band feel like shit <laughs> and it doesn't go well <laughs> Be like, oh, yeah, shit, I think, what into? yeah i think we've all been there at some point that you know <laughs> things haven't oh, worked out or whatever you know <laughs> oh, oh god i mean have you have any i mean i know everybody has like a bad like time you know time in a band but have you ever had like things where you're like oh no this was a bad idea <laughs> there's been you know there's been times that you know things got 
a little bit out of hand for me in a band like, you know, I was in a band called God Squad back in the late 90s. And it was, of course, you know, it was me playing bass and Rich singing just like every other band I'm in. Um, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, the the main, you know, guy who wrote most of the, you know, songs and stuff in the band, you know, he was kind of, uh, you know, he, he was very, I don't want to say militant, but like, <laughs> you know, he just had like, you know, and, you know, I, I respect his attitude. Like he was just like, we're just going to go out and destroy everything and take over everything. And, you know, everything was just like, it was almost like too much for me to, to handle at the time, you know, it's like, there was no, you know, uh, I think I just told him like, man, it's it's just, it's, it's not positive enough for me or something like that. When yeah, I quit. It's but, fun uh, away. <laughs> it should yeah. be fun. Like, uh, especially yeah. if you do music with other people, it should be fun. It should be easy going. Yeah. It shouldn't be like, Oh, you, you fucked up. Oh no, we're gonna have to throw you in a filing squad. You suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I I I I still you know get along with everybody in the band and everything, and you know, but uh, yeah, at the time it was just like you know it was getting too a little too crazy for me. But. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, especially a lot of people too, uh, and especially people who are bands that don't take it seriously. Like if you, there's certain that you can't take it too seriously. But you also have to have a little bit of, like, dedication if you want to continue doing music, especially with other people, because it's tough. And then people are, like, to make it work and to commit to practices. So I, I give you guys a lot yeah. of credit. That, that, that's tough. <laughs> that's definitely tough. Yeah, I, yeah I, think, I think the final uh, the final straw for me with that band was that we had a show in, in Providence, and uh, it was the middle of a blizzard and the car broke down or something so he had wanted us to load all the gear in the back of the back of the pickup truck and sit in the back of the pickup truck and drive to the providence with all the gear <laughs> no in the middle of a blizzard i would have yeah. grabbed my shit nope security that, that's crazy but, yeah. but he would have done it wow. i mean you know <laughs> wow i didn't I, I didn't even think that kind of uh craziness existed but i guess it did <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, again, thank you for taking the time to do this. Anything you want to promote anything, you know, just anything? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just you know, the the show that I mentioned coming up in uh, October fifteenth, and obviously the record, the pissed record coming out. Um, keep your ears to the ground for Deacon stuff. You know, hopefully the beginning of next year sometime. I think that's that's pretty much it. You know, you could find us. You know, if you just type the pissed into something or Al pissed, you can find me and find the bands. You know. We'll have our band camp up by the end of the month, and and Yay! I'll be uh, looking at releasing that record then, at least digitally, and hopefully have the vinyl soon after. I can't wait to buy all of them, and then nobody will have any of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I can't wait to to get the album, and definitely um can't wait to check out the shows that you're gonna have soon. So that's gonna be awesome. Uh, thanks, Inez, and um yeah, I, I love your podcast. Um, listening to it all the time. Love hearing oh, you walk you. around outside. <laughs> to the phone. Getting yelled at Great. or yelling at people. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. I'm not saying. <laughs> but, but yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, and I'll be on the lookout for more things because I, you know, I'm going to throw myself in the tour van, by the way. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Anytime.